Hello everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about Leonardo da Vinci. Don't forget subscribe my channel and like the video. Now, let's start. He was a painter, architect, inventor, and student of all things scientific. His natural genius crossed so many disciplines that he epitomized the term Renaissance man. Today he remains best known for his art, including two paintings that remain among the world's most famous and admired, Mona Lisa and The Last Supper. Did you know, Leonardo da Vinci's father, an attorney and notary, and his peasant mother were never married to one another, and Leonardo was the only child they had together. With other partners, they had a total of 17 other children, da Vinci's F-siblings. Leonardo da Vinci, The Last Super and Mona Lisa Although relatively few of da Vinci's paintings and sculptures survive, in part because his total output was quite small, two of his extant works are among the world's most well-known and admired paintings. The first is da Vinci's The Last Supper, painted during his time in Milan, from about 1495 to 1498. A tempera and oil mural on plaster, the Last Supper was created for the refectory of the city's monastery of Santa Maria del Grazie, also known as the Senecal. This work measures about 15 by 29 feet and is the artist's only surviving fresco. It depicts the Passover dinner during which Jesus Christ addresses the apostles and says, One of you shall betray me. One of the painting's stellar features is each apostle's distinct emotive expression and body language. Its composition, in which Jesus is centered among yet isolated from the apostles, has influenced generations of painters. When Milan was invaded by the French in 1499 and the Sforza family fled, da Vinci escaped as well, possibly first to Venice and then to Florence. There, he painted a series of portraits that included La Gioconda, a 21 by 31 inch work that's best known today as Mona Lisa, painted between approximately 1503 and 1506. The woman depicted, especially because of her mysterious slight smile, has been the subject of speculation for centuries. In the past she was often thought to be Mona Lisa Gherardini, a courtesan, but current scholarship indicates that she was Lisa del Giacondo, wife of Florentine merchant Francisco del Giacondo. Today, the portrait, the only da Vinci portrait from this period that survives, is housed at the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, where it attracts millions of visitors each year. Around 1506, da Vinci returned to Milan, along with a group of his students and disciples, including young aristocrat Francesco Melzi, who would be Leonardo's closest companion until the artist's death. Ironically, the victor over the Duke Ludovico Sforza, Gian Giacomo Trivalzio, commissioned da Vinci to sculpt his grand equestrian statue tomb. It, too, was never completed this time because Trivalzio scaled back his plan. Da Vinci spent seven years in Milan, followed by three more in Rome after Milan once again became inhospitable because of political strife. Leonardo da Vinci, Philosophy of Interconnectedness Da Vinci's interests range far beyond fine art. He studied nature, mechanics, anatomy, physics, architecture, weaponry and more, often creating accurate, workable designs for machines like the bicycle, helicopter, submarine and military tank that would not come to fruition for centuries. He was, wrote Sigmund Freud, like a man who awoke too early in the darkness, while the others were all still asleep. Several themes could be said to unite da Vinci's eclectic interests. Most notably, he believed that sight was mankind's most important sense and that saper vidir, knowing how to see, was crucial to living all aspects of life fully. He saw science and art as complementary rather than distinct disciplines, and thought that ideas formulated in one realm could, and should, inform the other. Probably because of his abundance of diverse interests, Da Vinci failed to complete a significant number of his paintings and projects. He spent a great deal of time immersing himself in nature, testing scientific laws, dissecting bodies, human and animal, and thinking and writing about his observations. At some point in the early 1490s, Da Vinci began filling notebooks related to four broad themes, 
painting, architecture, mechanics and human anatomy, creating thousands of pages of neatly drawn illustrations and densely penned commentary, some of which, thanks to left-handed mirror script, was indecipherable to others. His later years, he left Italy for good in 1516, when French ruler Francis I generously offered him the title of premier painter and engineer and architect to the king, which afforded him the opportunity to paint and draw at his leisure while living in a country manor house, the Chateau of Cloux, near Amboise in France, although accompanied by Melzi, to whom he would leave his estate, the bitter tone in drafts of some of his correspondence from this period indicate that da Vinci's final years may not have been very happy ones. Melzi would go on to marry and have a son, whose heirs, upon his death, sold da Vinci's estate. Da Vinci died at Cloux, now Clos Lacay, in 1519 at age 67. He was buried nearby in the palace church of Saint Florentin. The French Revolution nearly obliterated the church and its remains were completely demolished in the early 1800s, making it impossible to identify da Vinci's exact gravesite. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe my channel and like the video.